Hello people, welcome to the channel Green Bionomy, here we're trying to help you grow some more local and healthy food and if you're a farmer to have more profitable operations and basically the end goal is to empower people to build a more sustainable and regenerative future. So the more we are working on solutions and the better it will be. So this video is on cation exchange capacity. So when I was making the videos on the substrates, so their advantages, disadvantages and what to consider when choosing them, uh, this CEC, so cation exchange capacity kept on coming back and I was a bit procrastinating on it because it's a fancy scientific style word. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to deal with that. But in the end, I figured it's important to understand that if you want to uh, well understand what is going on in your system and what can affect your plants. So I sat down and I made some research and this video is basically what I think I understood about the subject. So there are probably some mistakes because I'm not a professional. So if you're an expert in that, well, just let me know in the comments what are my mistakes and you can, well, teach me some things, right? Uh, so yeah, video on cation exchange capacity, how it works, what is it and why it's important. Let's get started. Okay, cation exchange or our soils romance. Why do I call it romance? Well, it's because this whole cation exchange business, it's pretty much drama between particles that like each other because they're different and they attract each other and X is negative and the other one is positive and they're like, oh, I like you and they stick together. Okay, so it's some sort of romance that happen in your growing medium and your soil between um, the nutrients and the growing medium particles. Let's see how it works, right? So CEC, cation exchange capacity, this fancy uh, word and a bit scary. So the first thing we need to understand here is what are ions, right? So ions, it's um, or an ion, it's a particle, atom or molecule which has an electrical charge. Now this charge can be positive, so when it's positive we have a cation, which is a particle with a positive electric charge, and if it's negative we have an anion, a particle with a negative electric charge. Now the second thing we need to understand is the growing medium and what is it. Okay, so it's simple. It's simply material, a material made of particle, right? Like if we take the soil for example, the soil is a composition of different particles. We have uh, sand, silt, clay, and organic matter, and together these particles make up the soil as you know it. Now, it happens that these particles can also have a charge, for example in soil, clay and organic matter are anions, they have a negative electric charge. In hydroponics, you don't use soil, you use your own uh, growing medium that you chose. So to be able to choose it, well, you can go and check out my videos on what are the considerations and what are the advantages and disadvantages of these, of these media. So let's say we take expanded clay pebbles, okay? It's made of negatively charged clay particles, so it's a growing medium with a negative charge, okay? So just to summarize, so we have our cations, our anions, and we have the growing medium, and now we know that a growing medium is made of particles and it can have uh, an electric charge, okay? Now we need to understand the nutrients. So these nutrients, or nutritious particles, they also can have a charge and Nutritious anions, so nutrients with a negative charge, uh, the most common ones are chlorine, sulfate, phosphate, and nitrate. And the positive ones, so the nutritious cations, are sodium, potassium, hydrogen, magnesium, ammonium, and calcium. All right. So we have growing medium with a charge and nutrients with a charge. Some happens to be positive, some happens to be negative, right? And now everything makes sense when we start to consider that opposite attracts, okay? So that's where the romance happens. Uh, negative particles attract positive particles and then they stick together and it stops there, they just stick together, okay? So in this illustration, you can see below where I kind of messed up the watercolor for the negatively charged particle, but it's okay. Uh, it represents a clay particle that is negatively charged and it's attracting uh, potassium particles okay, in, uh, in orange. And basically, because of this difference, this opposite attract, the potassium will go and stick to the surface of the clay particles and will stay there until uh, this um, bounding strength decay and then it goes it goes loose again or the plant will come and absorb it 
Now, um, this strength is not always the same, right? The stronger the difference in electrical charge, the stronger the attraction. And this is, this is quite important. And it's very useful because it prevents leaching. That means that the particles in the growing medium or in the soil won't leach every time you water it or there is rain because they are attached to the surface of the growing medium. They are not just loose. That's something you want when you're dealing with soil because that means your soil have more um, cations like potassium or magnesium. But in hydroponics, that's more of a problem because that means that the growing medium will attract the nutrients and then your plant won't have only access to the nutrients available in the water that you choose to give to it, it will also have access to the nutrients that are stuck on the surface of the growing medium. And that removes a bit of the control you have on the nutrient intake of your plant. So it prevents leaching and it also affects the nutrient availability. That just means the nutrients available for your plants to consume, right? If you have a growing medium that attracts all the nutrients, it's, it's full of nutrients and the plant can just go and absorb a lot of it. Okay, now let's take this um, charge. So the, if, if we read it again, the stronger the difference in electrical charge, the stronger the attraction. And so this attraction strength for uh, attracting cations needs to be negative. So the strength of negative charge attracting cations, you call that electronegativity, okay? It just means that the difference is high and the attraction is, is, is stronger, okay? Now, if you combine that with the surface area of the growing medium, which is simply the space available for particles to attach themselves. So let's say it's a clay uh, pebble, it has a certain it has a surface on the surface there is spots right you can go and, and and stick to it well if it's full you can't go and stick to it if there's a lot of space you can go and stick to it so the surface area matter and depending on the growing medium you have you'll have a different surface area it depends on the size of the particles right um, clay is really small so you can have a lot of surface area because you have a lot of particles sand for example has a lesser surface area because it's bigger particles of course if there are if they are in an equivalent space. So, if we combine this attraction strength, the electronegativity, so the difference in charge between the positively and negatively charged particles, and we addition it with the surface area, so the space available for the particles to attach them themselves, we obtain the total amount of cations that can be held by the growing medium. So again, these cations here will be talking about things like potassium, hydrogen, or magnesium. So that the quantity of these particles that can be in your growing medium, and by in, I mean attached to the surface of the growing medium. And that thing is your CEC, your cation exchange capacity. That's what it means, all right? But now it doesn't stop there because there's also how, the question of how does the plant retrieve these nutritious cations, okay? So it happens that plants are businessmen or businesswomen and they go and they make a trade with the growing medium to take in particles. The currency that the plants use are hydrogen, so they can produce or they have these hydrogen uh, particles that have a charge of one, and they can go and exchange it um, with other cations of equivalent charge. That means to get one potassium that is uh, attached to, let's say, a clay particle, it will have to give one hydrogen. So one against one, right? But if it were to exchange uh, a magnesium, it will have to give two hydrogen because the magnesium has a charge of two. So that summarizes pretty much it for what is the cation exchange capacity and how it works. So keep in mind that I'm also just a beginner. So that's mo mostly something that I want. And I wanted to understand for my own hydroponics project so I looked online and I tried to understand that and that's what I understood from the subject. So I might, so that's what I understood from the subject. So I might have made some mistakes. So please let me know in the comments if you see any area of improvements or any things that are just straight up wrong that I can change and improve. And this is also um, a lot based on one video that I found on YouTube. So it's called if you, if you type in your search bar and you will find and you write cation exchange, 
you'll find this video with like a sort of superman farmer in a, in a maze field that's that would be probably like the first result you have so check it out because it's very good animated video on cation exchange capacity and that's mainly what i use to understand the subject so hope it was helpful if you liked well leave a like uh, drop in the comments for uh, some feedbacks or if you see any areas um to improve or review and subscribe if you want to stick along and follow the journey and i will see you next time bye bye